that was fine if you can afford to pay for them to be there mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. hours and hours uh -huh. and hours. And so then I found, well, I'll just photograph them and then work from the photographs. So, uh -huh. so that's what I did. You and pay a lot less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just have her come up, photograph them, you know, on your way. And then um, uh, sometimes, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, and then sometimes I'll, I'll paint a live model, you know, just to keep my chops up, mm -hmm. you know. But I don't like them to look like photographs. I don't want them to be photorealistic. Uh -huh. So yeah. at a certain point I get rid of the photograph. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I just use it to, you know, sort of to get the correct anatomy and mm -hmm. and then um, the shading and then I get very involved in the color and application of color and mm -hmm. uh, I love how you warm and use the blues and the oh, so many colors on on the skin palette. Yeah, I think it's important because you know we we really do have all those colors on our skin right. and and it's what really gives the painting. Uh, life and beauty and, and creates the space because you're trying to create the illusion of three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface and if you just use shading from from dark to light and all the same analogous colors they end up looking flat like a billboard or something and so in other words you have to get warm and cool and then this creates space because that you have contrast then. So essentially what you're doing is painting the space between you and the canvas because you're trying to get things to move back and forth in space. So that's what, what you're doing. You know. I didn't find that out until much later. But I had a good teacher. I had a good teacher uh, in uh, when I first started painting and she said it's all warm and cool colors, you know, warm and cool. And, and she kept stressing that and it just stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. and, I like so, that. Uh, yeah, because that's, uh, that's your contrast, you know. And, uh, and it works. It works. And people love the work. So I guess you're really going to be busy for the next while for your, with your ret retrospective, but is there something else you're working on right now that's, that you want to share? Or... Um, Good grief. Is this just uh, from your palette? I love this. Yeah. That is so awesome. Well, what, at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, I'll you take something use, like uh, this. Oil? And I just put it up there. And this is, uh, <laughs> this is 20 years. Wow. wow. <laughs> I, I'm thinking it'll be fun to saw this. It's so this organized. Thing. Look how beautifully you have your brushes all laid out, and I guess you take very good care of your brushes. Oh, I kind of I think I'm very I messy, and, <laughs> and you know. That's interesting. I mean, some artists who do everything is really neat and clean, but with me, mm. no, no, <laughs> not at all. Everything is kind of messy. Now she's a model. I painted her from life. Yeah. Eyes. Yeah. She. That. That's her eyes. That's how wow. she was. Laura. That. There's a nude of her over there, mm -hmm. and I painted that from life too. And, and it, was, it was really fun to do that, and you know, have her there and, and uh, just paint. Um, now I notice. Okay, so I've I've seen. So I don't see a lot of brown canvases here, but several of your like your trapeze pieces. I love those pieces. The round canvases. Oh yeah. Why do you choose round versus square? Square, because I mean, I understand this, and you explained a little bit. But the round ones, what what would you put on a round canvas versus a square canvas? Um, I don't. I well, I've done uh, quite a few canvases actually round. Mostly the flower paintings, oh, and okay. stuff, or, or the snails. I did the snails uh -huh. on round canvases. Tell I us like about that. the snails. Well, the, the snails are. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, they are kind of yeah. a, a wonderful symbol. It's funny, but I came out of my house one day and there was a snail and I almost stepped on him. And I, I picked him up and I looked at him and he stuck his head out and he went all around. <laughs> you know, and I could kill this guy, you know, just by going. <laughs> yeah. And and, uh, and he he does it. You know, he's just totally, mm, uh, you know, humble, <laughs> and uh, I thought, wow, you really are beautiful, and, and I looked at his shell, and it's brown, you know, everybody thinks beautiful is a lot of color, but it, the browns were amazing, and, mm -hmm. and I looked at the little spiral, how it goes to infinity, and 
So I took him to the studio with me that morning, and and I started painting him. And, you know, I kept him in a little jar for a while, and then uh, I let him yeah. out. Yeah, I fed him, and then <laughs> I let him out, and uh, after a day, he didn't seem happy in there, so <laughs> I, I took him out. How could you tell, I wonder? <laughs> I took him out, and then I found uh, shells in the yard that were empty, and I uh -huh. took those and yeah. mounted them. And did it torture any poor little No, shells? no, and then I, I mounted them, and then after I did, whoa, let's see, oh, I can't reach it, there's... There's one up there. Oh, oh I see snail. And, yeah, and, and I altar. made a little snail. Snail and, uh, um, Ode to a snail. With clay cool. and a thing, yeah. And then and then once you do one you understand it and then I could do them the rest all out of my head. Mm. So so they're all over. The, there's one down in the corner oh, yeah. that card there. Uh, at tops cool. and they uh, they had uh, they show the snails and... I like the pennas. Great. Uh, uh, oh, and this is the monks? Yeah. yeah, that's the first show I did of the monks. The one I saw, the picture I saw, they were all in a... Uh, in a circle, kind of, you were, were in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's in the book. Really intense. Yeah, that's in this book. Mm. This show. Yeah, this was at the Fresno crazy. Museum. Mm. And you walk in, and, and you walk in, and then you stand in the middle of the floor, and they're kind of all around you, looking at you. It's got to be con con confronted for people. Uh, you and know, they, they people they, were so affected and, by it that they, some of them were in tears, actually. Yeah, I was in and, tears looking at the pictures, but I can imagine actually being there in person, it's even more impactful. I got more, uh, you know, positive feedback on this show than anything I've ever done. And, you know, I think it's because it's not about me mm. and my art and my paintings and mm -hmm. what I'm doing, you know, it's about something so profound yeah. and so, uh, you know, amazing that, um, uh, that's the, that was the beauty of it, uh, that show. This was a proposal for the airport, a sculpture. It was going to hang in the uh, lobby where the tickets were. Which airport? At, at San Luis Obispo Airport. Oh, wow. And then these were like tap. Oh. There's motors in <laughs> here, but the motors are, the batteries are dead right now, and then this would turn. Oh, wow. And it was supposed to be my idea of uh, flight, you know. Um, the wings are actually like, like dragonfly wings. Yes, they're like <laughs> insect wings, and, and, and then it's like a spaceship, and then it's got the wood, and it's like the Wright Brothers machine, and, you know, uh, Lilienthal, and all the old aviation pioneers. Uh -huh. So, one, and when the thing's moving, it's <laughs> it bounces around. Oh, uh, yeah. I know, I, I love it. And it goes with it. <laughs> I love this little piece. <laughs> so, I don't think you're supposed to ask this of artists, but do you have a favorite painting piece? <laughs> <laughs> Is that just an impossible question? It, it's kind of impossible, yeah. really, because uh, they're all part of me, and, yeah. you know, so, and they just represent different times in my life mm -hmm. and different concerns I've had. Have so. you always been an artist, or? Were you a late yeah. bloomer? Did you no, start drawing I, as a kid and just start selling art? And well, you know, when I was a kid, I drew all the time and made things and stuff, but uh, I went to a Catholic school and there was no art classes, and and I got in trouble because I'd be drawing in school all the time. And then, Bring it to art. <laughs> and then I, I, I left, uh, high, you know, left school when I was uh, 16 and went to work in a... In a horrible shop, a chrome plating shop, you know, toxic chemicals, toxic. and I did that for about three or four months, and then I joined the Navy, and and when I was in the Navy, that's when, no, <laughs> I, was, I was in Airedale, I was down in Cuba, and uh, on the air base there, in Guantanamo, and then I started uh, painting there, because I'd work one day and have two days off, and and uh, I, I could work, and you know, I started doing. I know the difference, by the way. Well, <laughs> between Navy and Marine. But oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we had jarheads on the base. <laughs> and, then, and then we. 
then I was on board ship, and, and but that was the time when I really decided to, to become an you know to be an artist. Uh -huh. And I really didn't care. I read about the lives of the artists, and I didn't care if I starved or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean that was part of it. And uh -huh. uh, maybe it was my Catholic upbringing about sacrificing and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I uh, I did I was very serious about it. But I only went to school for art very small because I knew that if I wanted to do original work I had to be more self-taught than, mm -hmm. than being taught in the university system or you know get a de formal degree so I stayed away from that you know I, I did study art history I went to all the museums I studied work firsthand where did you go to school? I went to uh, uh, San Bernardino Valley College mm -hmm which was a, you know, one of those colleges they put up after World War II for people on the GI Bill to get an education, a two-year school, uh -huh. a junior college, and, um, and then that was it. Uh -huh. After that, I, uh, you know, I had this wonderful teacher who taught me the basics. All you need to know is the fundamentals, you know, warm and cool and composition, uh -huh. dynamic. That's all you need to know. You know, nothing else. But you know, they, they drive these guys too much, you know, to get a master's degree in painting. I mean, what a stupid idea is that, you know. So, uh, I mean, it's like, how much theory and crap do you want to know? And, and, and uh, you know, it's pretty, and, and, and it looks like it, because then they teach, the, you know, it's a terrible system. Um, they go through the system, and then they be, come teachers and they teach the system to the next group that comes through. And the only ones who really are strong enough to, should break out of it, you mm -hmm. know, break out of it. Did you have possible. a teacher? Would you consider teaching? Yeah. I you teach, teach, a, now, I teach right? a beginning drawing class. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is fine, you know, because I get these people who are, who are not artists in the class and, you know, I turn them on to art. Okay. I talk to them about, uh -huh. you know, the revelations. <laughs> That occur when. And if you see someone with real talent, how do oh. you how do you draw that out, or do you just say, okay? No, no, I uh, yeah, I tell them they, you've got it. You know, if you want to do it, you can do anything you want in art. You know, you want to be a teacher, stay in the system. If you want to be an artist, get out in the world and see mm -hmm. things and do stuff. You know, so mm -hmm. I, I sort of send that message along. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I know artists who have master's degrees, and they're very fine artists too. Mm -hmm. So it's not totally. You know, it's not, All for you don't become totally bereft of your creativity, uh -huh. you know, so. But I was scared of it, and I didn't want to, and I, I, I looked in at the studio classes, and, you know, at the university, and I saw what they were doing, mm -hmm. and I thought, I, I was either intimidated or afraid, I don't know, but I just said, no way, uh -huh. you, you know. You compare yourself too much. Yeah. Do you have a favorite artist? I have lots of favorite artists, the, and, and so it changes is, all the time. You mentioned Hieronymus Bosch. Hieronymus yeah. Bosch, Francesco Goya, right. to, in this century Lucian Freud, uh, you know, Balthus, uh, the French painter. Uh, every painter, every master is is my my mentor. You know, so you know, it just seems to be who I'm engaged with at the time. John Singer Sargent, I love him. Mm -hmm. so, you know, there's, you know, they're all so beautiful. Many. Yeah, yeah. But is all. there something you would like to do that you haven't done yet? Um, something you're just eager to tap into. Yeah, I'd like to do whatever comes next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Love that. laughs> Thank you, David. Oh, I could interview you all day. I would love to be this curator and see how you process that whole. Oh yeah, great. <laughs> Well, I don't know. So we great. just we talk and everything. He's a he's definitely a scholar, mm -hmm. and uh, he really is an art history uh, expert on art history, and he sees all of the uh, little remnants of mm -hmm. art history in my work, mm -hmm. you know, as it progresses and stuff. And he has great insight, and you know, and he really likes my work, and he's a great writer. You know, he knows how to write about art and so. I'm very fortunate to have him. His name's Gordon Fugley, and he uh, very fortunate to get him on my side. So. And he's the curator of. He's the curator at the San Luis Obispo Art Center. Yeah, and uh, there's 
Yeah, there's another curator involved in it too. So there's going to be two uh -huh. curators working on the show. The other curator doesn't have, is more of an artist, doesn't have, and in fact he is an artist, uh -huh. but he doesn't have the art history background that Gordon has, which is, and or the writing mm -hmm. skills that Gordon has. So bring so. a little something different. Mm -hmm. but yeah, but they're both, uh, they're both on my side, which, uh, which I'm very honored and humbled by. And you have wheels on all of your furniture. 